Welcome to class example number four. We're going to be looking at reflections again. Now let's look at class example number one. So write the equation of the image of y equals x squared after reflection in the line y equals x. So reflection y equals x, remember that this would then become x is equal to y squared, in which case we'd have to square root both sides to write in terms of x. So I'd have plus or minus square root of x is equal to y, or we could rewrite that as y is equal to plus or minus square root of x. After reflection in the y-axis, so um, all my x-axis, or sorry, all my x values are going to be mapped to negative x. So we would say y is equal to 10 to the power of negative x. With uh, a reflection in the x-axis, all our y values are going to be mapped to negative y. And so this is going to become negative y is equal to square root of x, or y is equal to negative square root x. Looking at class example number two, we want to describe how the graph of the second function compares to the graph of the first function. So x cubed is, um, compares to y equals negative x cubed. Well, here we would have had uh, y's be mapped to negative y, so this is a reflection. in x-axis. But because it's a cube, a cube function, we, this could also be our x values getting mapped to negative x. Could, so it could also be a reflection in the y-axis. Um, with this next example, y equals 2 of x and x equals 2 of y, well, X's have been mapped to Y and vice versa. So this is a reflection in X equals Y, the line of X equals Y or Y equals X. And lastly, this one is going to be our X values getting mapped to negative X. So this is going to be a reflection in the Y axis, in the Y axis. So in this next example, I have the graph drawn in the thick line, and that's a transformation of the graph drawn in the thin line. So these are my, this is my original line. We want to write an equation for each graph drawn in the thick line and state whether this graph represents a function. So first of all, it does not represent a function. And we could do our vertical line test where, you know, if, if my function crosses my vertical line in two, two positions vertically, then it's not a function. So... There's, there should only be, um, for every x value, should, there should only be one y value. But so for example, when I have, um, well, I guess any number, any, any value, like two, for example, I have one, y equals uh, positive one, but it also equals negative one half. So not a function. This one's not a function. So not a function. Now, the, uh, the reflection, though, so if we look at where this has been reflected, this is reflected at y equals x. So I have my invariant point along, along my, um, let me do this. Close enough. I have my reflection in my equation y equals x, so that's where my reflection is. So y equals x. Now in this next example, I have a reflection in, so all these points, if my, my values, so for example, 1, 2, 3, is mapped down to negative 3, that means I have a reflection in the x-axis. So my y values got mapped to negative y values. Um, and so this is a reflection in the x-axis, and this is a function, is a function. For the same reasons, passes the vertical line test, there's only one y value for every x value. In this next example, we're gonna sketch the graph of six x squared plus three. 
and then we're going to write the equation for all the reflections. So uh, I'm just going to plug this into my, my calculator. So 6 divided by uh, x squared plus 3. You know, I get some, something weird like that. And so it's at 2, and then it goes something like this. And we want to write the equation for negative f of x. And so here's our, our, our original uh, function. And my new function, or my reflected function, is going to look something like this. Negative 6 over x squared plus 3. So I just put a negative sign in front of my function f of x. Uh, next, we have y is equal to f of negative x. And so all my x values are going to be mapped to negative x values. So this is a, um, a reflection in the y-axis. And so y is going to equal 6 over negative x squared plus 3, which is just going to be the exact same thing, x squared plus 3. And lastly, we have an inverse function. And so x is equal to 6 over y squared plus 3. But in terms of x, we could say that this is y squared plus 3. If I cross multiply over 6 for x, and then y squared is equal to 6 over x minus 3. And if I take the square root plus or minus square root, sorry, I should say y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6 over x minus 3. Now we want to um, sketch each graph in B and state whether or not the graph represents a function. Now, if this is my original function, this first one, if this is just a reflection in the y-axis, and so this is just going to get reflected down here. And so it's going to look something like this. And yes, that is a function. Um, this is exactly the same the function of f of negative x is just because it's symmetrical horizontally, all the values just get mapped, uh, or sorry, reflected across the y-axis, and they, it remains the same. So it looks something like that. Uh, however, this next one is going to be inverted, or sorry, not inverted, but reflected at the line x equals y. And so um, if that happens, so this point, which is at 0 and 2, is going to now go to 2 and 0. And this and all the other points, too, are going to get inverted. So it's going to look something like this. And if you want, you can graph it in your calculator. But this is, n and this one was a function, of course, because this is a function. But this one is not a function because, again, it doesn't pass my vertical line test.